The main aims of a crate are safety, security, protection of belongings, to help house training and management of behavior problems. If your dogs reach the stage where they can be trusted, crating only deprives them of the freedom to move around that they've earned by working hard with you in training, to learn and abide by the rules you want them to live by. You should plan to use a crate until your dog is over their destructive chewing stage. For Labradors this is usually between 2 and 2.5 years of age. Before we move on with this video, you need to grab the free dog training secrets guide in which I have disclosed the deepest dog training secrets that professional dog trainers don't want you to know about. These training secrets would help you have a well-behaved, super intelligent, smart and obedient dog without spending hours in training him, her. Link to the free, secret training technique guide is in the description below. Exclamation mark. How to use a dog crate. To get the most effective start possible you first want to prepare the crate. This means buying a good crate of the correct size, a few required accessories, have a location and a crate training plan already before you even bring your Labrador home. The crate must be large enough for your dog to stand, turn around freely and stretch out laying down comfortably. But not so big that they're able to go to toilet at one end and still be comfortable at the other as this defeats a lot of the purpose. You should always leave a chew toy or two in with your dog to keep them occupied, and remove any collar or harness so there's no risk of snagging and choking. Don't just crate when you're leaving them alone. It's extremely important that you crate your Labrador for short periods at regular intervals throughout the day when you're home, not only when you're about to leave the house. This prevents your dog from learning that going to the crate always means they will be left alone which can result in them becoming reluctant to enter and use it. When to use a dog crate. When to use a dog crate, large green tick on a dog crate I'm now going to discuss the times and reasons that you should use a dog crate, before providing instruction after on the equally important times when you should not use a crate. 1. Always leave the crate open for your dog to use voluntarily. First and foremost, the crate should be left open and accessible for your dog to use voluntarily when they wish. It provides your dog with his own little place to go for peace and quiet where they'll not be disturbed, which is particularly important in a house with small children. 2. Keep your puppy safe when you cannot supervise them. If you're busy around the house and cannot supervise your puppy properly, popping them in a crate for a short while will remove the potential for them to get into trouble such as chewing electrical wires or swallowing harmful, toxic or inedible objects in your home. 3. Protect your belongings when you cannot supervise them. Related to the previous point, when your lab puppy is teething and chewing everything they can get their little mouths on, popping them into a crate when you can't supervise them will protect your belongings. By spending $50 to $100 USD on a crate, you'll get your investment back tenfold by protecting your shoes, furniture and other possessions when you can't keep an eye on your furry little chewing machine. 4. You should never leave a dog or puppy alone with small children. Children very often play rough with dogs, pulling their ears and tails and can easily hurt a small puppy. And this can lead to a puppy becoming very nippy and potentially hurting the child in return. So if you cannot supervise them, do not leave a very young child and your dog alone together. Pop your lab in a crate for a short while until they can have your supervision. Use the crate for a timeout. When your puppy becomes way overexcited, begins to get a bit nippy and they won't calm down, and this happens a lot with young Labrador puppies, you can pop them in the crate until they're relaxed and have regained control. Never do this to punish your dog, always stay calm and speak positively throughout. For safety traveling. Whether by road or by air, traveling in a crate is the best and safest way for your dog to travel. It keeps them calm, offers protection for when an accident occurs and protects the driver from the distractions of a loose dog in the car. When not to crate your dog. There are times when you shouldn't crate your dog. Sometimes for medical reasons, sometimes for psychological reasons and sometimes because it may set back your dog's development and your training efforts so far. These are the times and reasons that you should not crate your dog. 1. If your dog is afraid of the crate. Not all dogs like a crate and it's cruel and inhumane to force a dog showing fear and anxiety to use one. You'll know if your dog fears the crate because they'll look incredibly scared, ears flat, tail down, trembling and in extreme cases may even vomit or defecate. 
Never force a dog into a crate, they must be willing to go inside and should feel happy and comfortable there. In some cases they may seem happy when you first put them in, but when you return after some time you see damage to the crate caused by attempts to escape, wet fur or a wet floor due to drooling, urine or feces in the crate or reports from neighbors of barking and crying. 2. Dogs who suffer with separation anxiety. If your dog shows any of the following signs of separation anxiety when left alone you need to discuss this with professional help and avoid crating them, destructive chewing, soiling the house, excessive drooling, scratching at doors and windows trying to escape or non-stop barking and whining. Although nearly all dogs come to see their crate as their special place that makes them feel safe and secure, this isn't the case with those that suffer separation anxiety and crating them could in fact make their feelings worse. 3. If crating will exceed the time they can hold their need to toilet. A dog will feel the same when trying their very hardest not to soil their crate, so don't put them in this position. If it does get to the stage where they end up soiling their crate, they'll feel very disappointed with themselves and anxious, so avoid this all costs. It's basic care to allow your lab the opportunity to go to toilet regularly. 4. Your dog begins to toilet in their crate. As discussed above, this could be due to fear of the crate or separation anxiety. But it could also be for medical reasons or just that they've unlearned to keep their crate clean. A medical condition that could be worsened by being crated. Although a crate is very useful, recommended and will even be sought out by your dog when they're ill or convalescing, some conditions require that a dog be able to move about freely to prevent their health from worsening. An old dog with arthritis or a younger dog with inflamed joints may become stiff and sore if they're confined with little movement. There are other ailments with which being confined isn't recommended, your vet will be able to advise if this is the case. For lengths of time exceeding 5 hours. With the exception of night times and one-off exceptional circumstances, you should avoid crating your dog for more than 5 hours at a time, and the frequency of this should be kept to an absolute minimum. When a dog's crated for long periods, they get no exercise, no interaction or socialization and this can lead to depression and anxiety. Don't ever crate them just because you want peace and quiet. If your Labrador puppy's being a nuisance and begging for attention when you're tired and want to relax, this isn't an excuse to confine them to a crate. A puppy can be annoying, they can demand all your time, but you signed up for this and it's a part of being a lab parent until they're fully grown. It's nothing short of negligence to lock up your puppy if you can't be bothered. You have to play with them, interact with them and provide the training they need. While leaving dog in crate while at work is not recommended, if this must be tried, it shouldn't be more than 8 hours. If crating a puppy while at work is not an option, dog proof the room you're keeping them in to ensure they can't injure themselves while you're away. Then it's absolutely vital that your dog is well exercised and given lots of attention before and after being placed in the crate, and you have somebody come and take your dog out for exercise and go to toilet halfway through the day. A sociable dog such as a Labrador cannot be left alone and isolated 10 hours a day, 5 days a week, 48 weeks a year. This is a poor quality of life. This lack of interaction and companionship will likely end with your dog developing emotional problems, depression, anxiety and behavioral issues. The main aims of a crate are safety, security, protection of belongings, to help house training and management of behavior problems. Do you want to have a well-behaved, obedient and calm pet dog without spending hours in training him? Check out the first link in the description and download the Secret Training Technique Guide absolutely free. It is available for free only for a limited period of time. Thanks for watching the video. Comment below if you liked the video. Please subscribe to the Little Paws Training channel if you are serious about training and grooming your dog. Also, join our Facebook group where you get all the solutions to your daily doggy problems.